This is CJ at Fox 9 with comedian Jeff Gerbino. He now lives in Florida, but calls Minnesota his comedy birthplace. When he lived here, he also provided a lot of entertainment as a radio show host. Gerbino was back in the Metro for some anniversary shows. I was about to arrange for a time to do an interview with Jeff when I decided it was better to get a few celebrity impressions out of him Maybe if I was smart, on I could, the spot. I would do it now. So this do banter now, was inspired by the it? first questions that I mean, came what, to my cotton picking. That's a southern expression for you, Jeff. Mind. So what did you think about Al Franken's situation? Well, as I said before, he, he wasn't good enough. He wasn't smart enough. And doggone it, women didn't like him. <laughs> Did, did you know that Louis C.K. was so poorly behaved? There's always a tip-off when all your opening acts are under 30 and have done comedy less than two years. Yeah, it might be a, might be a clue that you might be trying a little hanky-panky there. Really? I had no idea that Louis C.K. was from the... Well, he's not from the Bill Cosby school. Bill likes him unconscious. So, <laughs> at least you got to give him credit. They were conscious, okay? <laughs> they, know, they were disgusted and revolted by what was going on. I just don't know how Lewis, as a comedian, steps out on stage ever again. What do you do? You walk out and go, <laughs> So you think I did it. You think he's done? Uh, I think that he's going to have a tough time getting back on a comedy stage without a lot of women getting up and leaving or, mm -hmm. or flat out outside protesting, not even paying for the ticket. Yeah. So you think that he'll have a tougher time than... Um, Marv uh, Albert? Who, who, Marv Albert? Who, 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 Mar well, who was, uh, no, the other comedian, the one who was dropping the N-bomb, uh, Richards. Oh, yeah, Mike, Michael you think, you think you'll have a tougher time than Michael Richards? Yeah, well, uh, that was the uh, mea culpa when Seinfeld went on the late night shows to go, you know, I'm for the guy, I really am, but uh, at this point he's in God's hands. But yeah, I think, I think it's going to be harder because he was a bigger star in terms of stand-up. And now for some political talk a little closer to where Jeff lives now. Yeah, they're, they're feeling real good about themselves right down there in Alabama right now. It was the yeah. black women. You know, the black women are the ones who pushed black out. Black women got out there, baby. They were moving their head and putting them votes down and going, uh-uh, mm-mm. No, I'm sorry, Mr. KKK. Not today. <laughs> now, no, if, now, if Roy Moore hadn't been... Uh, a suspected pedophile. That would he would have been your kind of guy, right? No, oh yeah, my, I like a guy with a pistol in his pocket who just <laughs> takes it out every now and then, you know, with his surrogate. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. And a cowboy hat. Cowboys haven't existed for a hundred years, so you're wearing a costume, sir. You want to get out of your silly western costume? This is a state, you know. That's all they were thinking about is roll tide. Yeah. yeah. What uh, what's your what's your favorite thing about uh, Donald Trump? Uh, the ability to constantly lie and tell people anything that comes into my head. I am the bipolar president. That's right. Do you ever run into Jay Leno? Let's uh, see, I did in Florida, actually, in Miami. Yeah, you know, I was down there. He's like, hey, how you doing, Jabina? What's going on? And it's like, yeah, well, I says, I wish you and I would have hooked up in the social media era. I'd have had a better shot. <laughs> Is he still angry with you for impersonating him? No. You know when yeah. you were calling up and ordering those no, limos? The, that was, that, am I remembering that no, correctly? No, I ordered the limos. Those are a little over the top. No, I was. Yeah, okay, so you admit that you're calling and ordering limos oh, and well, J-Limos? I was in line to get the, the David Letterman show. Mm -hmm. So I got a little uh, torqued and I said, yeah, that's right. And Jay Leno, not exactly looking out for your best interests. Mm -hmm. I was a prophet on a hill. <laughs> Unfortunately, David Letterman and Leno both got infuriated with me, so. That was a long time ago. Long, long time. But you know, I just think that it's interesting the way that worked out between uh, Lennon and Lennon, you know? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, but you, you do admit that they're calling up and ordering limos in like, you know, never was, limo. was, what was, I, was, was over the top. Can we do it at the 40th anniversary of comedy here in this yes. city? Can we at least do this mea culpa? Here's what I did. Other comedians were egging me on. Uh, Bruce Baum was there when I did it. Another guy named Frank Lunny. And they said, call up the club in Oklahoma City because Leno was coming the next week. <laughs> and all I did was I negotiated a better deal. He was doing five days at $5,000 a night. I got him 5000 a show on four nights. I don't know why that was so objectifiable. Because the club owner finally goes, well, okay, Jay, if that's what you say. Because he was swinging a big axe back then, you know. And I said, well, don't ever say that I don't do the best impression of Jay Leno, because you haven't been talking to Jay Leno, you've been talking to Jeff Gervino. I undressed it right there. Okay. Somehow the rumor mill gets a hold of that, gets a hold of that. Next thing I know, I'm ordering private jets as Jay Leno, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this as Jay Leno, and that's just the comedy rumor mill. The, the actual story is far less glamorous, but funny and worthy of being told <laughs> the right way for a change.